All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Happy Healthcare Sim Week 2024. My name is John Alex. I'm one of the planning co-chairs for Healthcare Sim Week 2024. Um, this is my second year doing this. Uh, I helped and worked with Curtis last year on uh, Healthcare Sim Week, and it was a great experience. So I came back for more. Um, thank you all for joining us. I think we've got a really cool session today. Um, for those of you that participated last year, if you remember, our, our theme was celebrating your success. And, you know, we are so busy and there is so much going on in the healthcare community that we very seldom take time to pause and reflect on, on all the amazing things that we're doing. This year, the team came up with the idea of kind of an offshoot of that. You know, we've celebrated our successes. Now, next thing we do is take some time to recognize where we're going. What is our, you know, what's the future hold? What are our next priorities? What are our next um, aspirations? And are there any challenges or anything that we're facing as we go through that? So that's where the launch pad to legacy and what's your next idea really came from. And so what we're gonna do today is we've invited a couple of the um, uh, chairs and vice chairs from some of our interest groups, affinity groups to discuss a little bit about what they're doing and kind of what their next is. So I'd like to ask for everyone who's taking the time to um, log in. This is an open forum. Please feel free to ask questions. Um, the more participation we have, like everything else in simulation, the better event it's going to be. And um, we'll look forward to hearing uh, what you have to say. And if you've got any questions or if you're facing any challenges, or if you just want to take a moment to tell everyone else what your next is, we'd love to hear it. Okay. That being said, I'd like to start off. Let's go ahead and have our presenters introduce themselves. Um, Deb, would you like to kick us off? Sure, sure. Thank you so much, everyone, for being for joining us, and thank you, Alex or Dr. Alex and Curtis for in, inviting us. We are. I'm Deb Tauber. I'm a, a nurse by background trade. I um, serve. I worked in the ER for like 25 years, and then got out and found and found my my why, which is simulation. Uh, I serve as a reviewer for Society for Simulation and Healthcare. I'm on the council and I'm an entrepreneur. I have my own company, it's called Innovative Sim Solutions. And we do three things. We have the free podcast, the Sim Cafe. Uh, we have some courses online and uh, I do some consulting. Uh, so that's a little bit about me. And when we get into it later, I'm gonna tell you all about how we started with our affinity group in 2020. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Doug. That's fantastic. Courtney and Margarita, how about you? Sure, I can start. Um, my name is Courtney McGuire. I am a simulation education coordinator at the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Um, and I'm also the chair of the IPE affinity group. Uh, so I'll let Dr. David um, introduce herself next. Hi everyone, I'm Margarita. So um, I am a my background in nursing, and I've been everywhere. I've been in all specialties you can think of, but um, a little bit over two years ago, I landed in simulation, and um, now I'm preparing for a huge role in IP at our institution. So it's very timely this this discussion panel. So I'm, I'm curious myself, I'm going to bring a little bit to the table, but I'm curious to hear about everybody else's experience because I'm, I think I'm going to need that help. So I'm also with Courtney, um, we chair the IPE stake in um, for SSH. Awesome. Thanks, Margarita. All mm -hmm. right. So that being said, we're going to start off. Um, Deb, you kind of beat me to the punch, uh, but I can appreciate where you're coming from. And as an emergency physician, you know, I kind of found my why in simulation as well. Uh, I always tell people the story when I was first asked to run a simulation program, I kindly said, no, thank you. And 15 years later, here we are. So um, sometimes the why finds you. But as far as the new to simulation affinity group, tell us a little bit about that, what it is, um, kind of what the group does and how you got started. Sure. Um, okay. I'll, let me start. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yes, okay. Deb, please go Perfect. ahead. Okay. Um, so we started in 2020 and a group of us of 35 people got together during the pandemic. Some of them included, you know, Susie, Amy Copperthwaite, um, 
Kim Layton. So these, we all thought we need a new to simulation. We need to help people get on the fast track and not be, you know, not knowing what they're doing. So we started and we proposed uh, the, the affinity group to be new to simulation. And the goals for the group were to integrate evidence-based simulation energy across healthcare and so on and so forth. Um, and we got <laughs> rejected. And so 2021 comes by and we put in the proposal again and it was uh, Shannon DeMarco, who is the chair of the group. I'm the, the vice chair. Um, so she is still the chair. Unfortunately, she was unable to be here today. Um, a couple other people that were co-chairs bowed out. Uh, I stayed on as vice chair. And then Amy Chow just signed up to be um, another co-chair. And we're really excited about this because we all have different backgrounds. So Shannon is a business person and Amy is an IT person and I'm in nursing. So we have a, a new dissimulation with, um, you know, a, a very different backgrounds, which I think is going to help. So our first meeting we had was uh, prior to IMSH, we had a short meeting and we talked about what we were going to talk about at the first meeting. So our first meeting, none of us knew what to expect. Actually, Shannon and I did not know what to expect. So it's on a Monday morning, the Monday of IMSH, seven o'clock in the morning, and it is pouring rain out. And we're thinking, we, we looked at each other and basically said, we probably won't have anybody come. And wouldn't you know it, we had 60 people in that room. And believe it or not, of those 60 people, Shannon, myself and a person named Renee Norberg were the only ones that had been to IMSH and had simulation experience. Everyone else was new to simulation. So we were so excited to actually have people, you know, wanting things and wanting to learn. And so we shared um, as much as we could with them um, during that time. And then the group meets. So our first meeting, uh, the next meeting we had was just kind of an open forum. I talked a little bit about SSH and uh, accreditation because people tend to have questions uh, about that. Um, we have an upcoming meeting on November 6th and Shannon DeMarco is actually going to be presenting and she's part of the planning committee for IMSH 2025. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about navigating IMSH. Because if you're new to simulation and you you know you're going to the conference and you've been there before, you know that you don't know what to do. So we're going to help, hopefully help people to figure out what they can do to make it um, a more valuable event for them. And then our meeting at IMSH is going to be on Monday morning, uh, the 13th of January at 0700. Um, so I guess if does anyone have any questions for, for me about the group? We have the discussion threads going, and if people want to learn, they can, uh, you know. Yeah, go there. I should say, feel free to throw things in the chat as well. Curtis and I will keep an eye on that and throw the questions up there if need be. Um, that's really cool. I like the idea of navigating IMSH. So, if for those who have been there, if you can remember the first time you've ever been to IMSH, it is overwhelming. Um, and it's not just because it's such a big event and there's so much going on. It's just because the, the collaboration and the camaraderie and everything is so palpable. Uh, there's so many people there wanting to help others that it, it's almost too much. But, uh, yeah, it can be very daunting. So I think that's a very cool topic. And um, Shannon's a great person to present on that. That's fantastic. So, Deb, let me ask you, uh, as a relatively new affinity group, um, there's probably a lot of nexts, but what's your next? My next. So for my next Monday, I'm going to present on behalf of the Society for Simulation and Healthcare, the Council of, for Accreditation, and I'm going to present on all about the journey of accreditation. That would be my immediate next. So that'll be next Monday. And um, if you're interested, you can uh, you can tune in. And I see someone says, Amy is a mentee. She will be great for the group. She is amazing. We are so blessed to have her, um, to have her with us and to have her volunteer to, uh, to join. 
And any of you who would like to join and be, become part of helping, you know, new to simulation, people who are new to simulation, we'd love to have you. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you for that, Deb. Um, let's switch gears and go over to Courtney and Margarita. So you, the chair and the co-chair of the IP affinity group, um, there's a lot going on. And I think we can all agree that IPE is probably one of the most impactful things that we do in simulation getting these various groups together and working on everything from communication to processes to um, just collaboration and working through challenges and pain points and just making things better is kind of a foundational element of what we do in simulation. Like many things, I think during the pandemic, probably had to get very creative in how to continue IP. So I'm just wondering if um, your group has any thoughts or if any ideas have been shared about things that have come out of the pandemic that are going to be continued forward or that might be paving the way for something new in uh, IPE? I would say that one one thing that has come out of the pandemic for us, um, and it, it kind of took a maybe backseat during the pandemic, was uh, we have some student interest groups that are in, interested in both simulation and interprofessional education. Um, during the pandemic, everything got put more put on hold and um, kind of sidelined. But now since then, there's been just a huge revamp of that. Um, and most recently, we had a, our student group interest groups put together a um, really huge interprofessional health day is what they called it. And it had um, 350 student learners across eight health professions all in four hours in the afternoon. Um, put together. So I'd say since the pandemic, the student interest of growing interprofessional education opportunities amongst each other has has really grown a lot. Awesome. That sounds like an incredible event. Um, Margarita, do you have any thoughts? I'm just, I'm stuck in the 350 in the four hours part because I'm here um, how I said earlier, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be put in a, in a position very soon, and I've been preparing for it, where I'm going to literally start a, an IP department from scratch, because there is none at our university. Um, we do have, like, collaborative events and stuff between um, our medical students or our DOs and nursing, you know, but those kind of individualized events, but now everything's going to be housed under one place. And one of the things that I always think about is how are we going to get all of these students plus everyone else that has to be a part of these IPE events together? Let's say in one day, now four hours. I am just excited to hear how that happened because I, in my head, it's not, it's not connecting. So how, how did they break that up into groups? Because I know that there had to be a like what, 10 or 12 in a group. So I'm, I'm excited to hear Courtney what, how that worked out. Yeah, we had, um, so they had three different stations and our station was the simulation um, station and we they broke it up into doing uh, three different scenarios running simultaneously at a time. Um, and in our sim center, we maxed out almost every single room that we have. And it was the largest event that we have ever done in our space. A uh, little background about our space is we have six simulation rooms that can be set up as either inpatient or ER setting. And then we have 14 exam rooms that are more clinic style. And then we also have four debrief rooms. And we had 23 rooms in use. Um, each hour went on, went um, for, had to flip those rooms over. And we did have about six student learners in each of those rooms at a time, plus one facilitator per room, plus one standardized patient per room. So it was quite quite the production. Um, we had about, I think it was at least 10 student organizers that, that coordinated all of it amongst our, with our 10 simulation staff members too. And um, they really had it nailed down and, and walked through everything. But I, I'd say the planning really started about a year ago. Um, they the students got a grant um, to help fund some of the standardized patient costs and those sorts of things as well. Um, but yeah, the students really did, did most of it. We were, we were their support, which was a cool to see um, how engaged the students were in that. 
And I, I do notice that in the group that we have in the IP affinity group, there are so many questions that are put out there regarding how to start, how to do these types of, um, of stimulations, how to do these IP activities outside. Because yes, I, I'm the director of our simulation center programming, but the space is limited for so many different people, right? Um, I, we usually run uh, some sort of an IP activity called transition to residency for fourth year re um, medical students that are getting ready to go to residency, where we literally take one huge room um, everywhere where we can find one, but the main room has a bunch of different skills that we want to make sure that these medical students learn to do, like, you know, fully insertion and all those types of things. And the people that are on each table are nurses. So that's kind of something that we kind of involve another uh, healthcare profession in there. And, but I know the logistics of turning those rooms around when it, they're being done in the sim center. So how, how often, like how many minutes were each case? Like how often were you moving those students around or you know whoever was leading that? Yeah, they had, um, so each session was about an hour long. And in the session, they, um, the first 10 minutes were a pre-briefing and then the scenario itself was 10 minutes. And then they allotted five to 10 minutes to transition to a debrief room because that was outside of our space. Um, and then the, the last 20, 25 minutes was a large group debrief. Um, so, so that's how we, we restructured it so the, they weren't in our simulation room for the entire hour. We had about 10 minutes to flip, um, clean the rooms and, and reset them too. So it wasn't as bad. And as well as the scenario topics themselves weren't, weren't very um, skill or task focused. They were more conversation, teamwork, collaboration focused. So the room reset wasn't as intensive for, you know, having to refill syringes or reset the, the oxygen tubing or different things like that. So that piece was helpful too, as well as we had the standardized patients were able to help reset the rooms um, when they were done acting. They could just pause, reset quick, and then, then they were ready for the next group to go to. Um, to, to touch on how we get all of these people to coordinate their schedules and work really well together. Um, part of that is it hasn't happened overnight. Um, the other the other piece is we are a fairly small town, so we have um, and university, and we've been able to collaborate with each other over the years. Um, if we've had one group work together, they can say that we also bring up, hey, I know that this person works in PT. Let's Let's try to get more PT involvement. Um, we also incorporate the pharmacy students from a different university that's an hour away. Um, they participate with us too, but it's it's just started as conversations and then we figure out um, what can we, where can we be flexible and maneuver schedules around to make things work. Um, in relation to this interprofessional health day, the students were convincing enough to all of their faculty members for all eight of these health sciences to cancel lecture for all of Friday afternoon. So they were able to participate and make it happen. And some of the groups also made it mandatory for the students to participate. Um, so then we got more buy-in that way too. So mm -hmm. it was very powerful, very cool to get all of that involvement. Hi, Deb. Yeah, Courtney, I have just a couple questions. So what were the eight different uh, professions that you had? We had um, students from med students, nursing, PT, OT, nutrition and dietetics, the PharmD program, medical lab sciences, and social work. Oh my gosh, that's so amazing. Wow. You have to be so yeah. proud of them, you know? Wait, I, I am. I'm gushing about it every time I can, I can think about it because what they did was just amazing. I wonder if they can write about that. We're trying to get them research. to present a poster at SSH this year. That's good. Yeah, mm -hmm. you might even want to consider a hot topic or a podium. That's a, mm -hmm. I mean, pulling off an event of that size. And I think you've touched on a couple of really important points. I mean, one, it's not done overnight. And um, I think one of the things that probably was really effective in what you did is you got buy-in from 
uh, the instructors. So they were willing to cancel class, even to the point of making it mandatory for some people. That's phenomenal. Um, you know, we all know that IPE is broad reaching and, you know, I, I work at a sim lab in a community hospital. And so we're a small center as well, but everyone wants to do it. it it's just uh, schedules are so busy um, and there's so many demands on times. It's hard to get people in the same place at the same time. So that's really impressive that you were able to pull that off. Yeah. And I give kudos to the students because they did most of the work too for it. So <laughs> it's it was awesome. Courtney, did you get any kind of feedback from the groups that came through? Anything particular that, you know, positive or negative or things you would change for the next iteration? Uh, we got mostly just verbal feedback so far. The students gathered their um, feedback and we haven't had it dis dispensed to us yet. Um, but every everybody's like, is this the first one that's going to be and now come, become now an annual thing? Um, and we're starting to think about other ways we can improve it um, down the board. Um, some of our facilitators were not as comfortable facilitating somebody from not not from their profession. Um, so that would be something we thought about to help prepare them in the, the debriefing guide just a little bit better so they felt like they could contribute um, to the conversation more comfortably. Awesome. But with logistics wise, I don't have too many suggestions for, for them for changing. So I'm curious to see, see the feedback once we get it. How did they get their um, funding? They they applied for a grant, and I don't know the details on it. I just know that they got a grant approved for this. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, the biggest part of that was student-led. Mm -hmm. To get students to do this, it's it, that's the faculty is hard, but for students to actually do this whole process, it's, it's amazing. That's that's a great accomplishment. Yeah, it was it was really cool to see how excited and engaged they were through the whole process. And we've been meeting with them and working with them since uh, probably March or April. Um, and for it to come come to fruition this September was really cool. So, Deb, I had a follow on question for you based on something that Courtney said, um, you know, some facilitators not feeling comfortable uh, facilitate outside of their specialty or something like that. And I know with your new to simulation, I was reading the mission of the affinity group. Uh, and I think it's an, it's a pretty standard leap to go. That this is someone who's new to simulation, who's but going to be involved in simulation. But it also spoke to me a little bit about um, folks that it maybe are clinical faculty, but you're bringing them into the sim lab to, uh, facilitate or things like that. And they don't really have that simulation background or haven't had much experience or, you know, they got a little bit of in school, but don't really know what a debrief is or how to effectively orient someone. Um, as your group has been building over the last year, have you run across any, uh, you know, particular questions or struggles or challenges or pain points that the folks in your family group have encountered in integrating these, um, new simulationists, if you will? Yeah, they always have questions about training. They have questions about debriefing, you know, why uh, many of them were sent by their organization, by their institution to IMSH, and, you know, hey, learn about simulation. And then they're like, you know, now that we're here, oh my gosh, I, I don't know. So, um, you know, Shannon and myself uh, have, you know, taken the role on to, if they have particular questions to meet with them, um, just alone if they have stuff like that. And that was how Amy Chow got involved. She reached out and said, hey, I'd like to be part of, you know, this this group. And how cool is that to have somebody that is relatively new to simulation be in the new to simulation group and to be bold enough to say, you know, where her, her struggles are and what she's, you know, obviously Shannon and I have been doing this for a long time. So sometimes we don't know what the new person doesn't know but we want to make sure that they feel comfortable and recognize that simulation is just a great place to learn. Yeah. It sounds like your group would be a great place for mentorship as well. A lot of mentorship opportunities, I imagine. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. Awesome. So for the group, uh, I think I've talked enough. Are any questions out there? Anything that either um, you'd like to hear more about, either from the IPE group or the new simulation group, or questions you have about things that are going on in your own experiences, or anything that you'd just like to share about your next? What's happening for you after this week? Well, I can share my next. I know I didn't do that part. Well, everybody gets their next questions together or comments. Yeah, so, great. Sure. Um, in October, I think when is it? October 21st, I'm going to be presenting in San Juan, Puerto Rico um, regarding not only the pearls of the briefing and simulation, but also talking about the importance of IPE because in this role that I keep mentioning, um, what I see IP is not only doing things within different professions and having representation from each of the schools, but how can we take this international? I mean, with you know the virtual ability, you know, we can have groups from Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, like from all these different places that are so involved in these different groups in simulation um, that it can be definitely a really kind of a worldwide experience, similar to courting students, they were able to gather all these people, all these different specialties in four hours. Why can't we do that in, uh, for other schools in other countries too, right? We have the flexibility of doing virtual systems. So that's my next. So I, I'm, I'm learning with everyone in here. Uh, this is a whole new realm for me, but I'm thinking of how can we get this outside of like the box that we're in and you know, taking it to that international level. Awesome. That sounds great. Yeah. How many people are in your group in uh, that that affinity group? Seems like Courtney said 3,000. You said Yeah, 3, I believe there's about 3,000 people in the group. So mm -hmm. that's amazing. I know yeah. in our new to simulation group, we've only got a, like right around 500, a little over 500. Which but is not bad not for, for a year. That's pretty good. Yeah, very good Thanks. For one year, that's awesome. It's a good number. I yeah. was thinking about um, additional things that are what's next at my university. Our med students have what we've dubbed a badging system and they get points towards their badge for it's for an IPE experiences badging system. And each each different experience they get, they get a certain amount of points. So this IPH day, they got quite a few points towards it. I don't have the the breakdown of what each point means and what level it gets them, um, but I do know that other um, health professions and and colleges and schools are looking at it too. So like the OT department here has has been considering getting that too, so the students can. Um, the more they're interested in IPE things, they can participate in those experiences and get credit towards this badge as well. So that's another thing that's up and coming within our system. Are those digital badges, Courtney, or, or yep. physical? Yep. Okay. It'll be digital yep. badges. Yep. Great. Yep. There was actually a really good presentation. I think it was IMSH 2024 that I attended about, you know, promoting your your system uh, and your facilitator experience through virtual badges and things like that. So good. That's awesome. All right. Anybody else? This I is a historical so. moment. Oh, okay, great. I was going to say it's a historical moment. You put 30 simulationists in a room and no one's talking. <laughs> That's a first, but yeah, please go ahead. It is so very true. Um, so my name is Carrie Gigre. Um, I do a lot of stuff in simulation. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have a master's degree in healthcare simulation and uh, lead the haptics work group uh, that SSH is doing around um, technology in simulation. Um, so I'm not quite sure how many people, I know there's a few people who probably know about this, but this has been a, a year long project that we've been doing. There's five different groups. And so um, it will be interesting to see how this moves forward uh, around technology and simulation. Um, so look forward for uh, look forward to seeing it at IMSH, at least from my understanding, we'll be doing some sort of presentation there. Wow, thanks for sharing that. Sure. 
Can you tell us a little bit more about the haptics? Sure. So um, our haptics work group is um, looking at how individuals are using haptics within healthcare simulation specifically. Um, and so we recently put out a survey um, to have directors or individuals who are using um, some type of uh, simulation, whether it be VR, AR, um, you know, task trainers and those kind of things uh, to identify what is being used out there in the haptics world. And then um, we'll be creating part of an overall uh, white paper between, um, there's five different groups around um, technology. And so we'll be doing a portion of a white paper around that to uh, speak into what should happen in the future around uh, haptics. And uh, so it's kind of quite interesting. I'll be honest, I have very limited um, experience with haptics. I work for a VR company, but I just recently joined them a year ago. And um, so it always has interested me though, like, hey, if I teach somebody how to do IVs in virtual reality, does it matter? Does it matter that they feel something? Like that's my overall curiosity around it. Like, is it muscle memory or does it matter? I had a 20 plus year career in EMS and I did a lot, a lot of simulation there. And um, a lot of things were more about muscle memory, not necessarily about feeling or looking. And so um, it just really interested me. And by happen chance, nobody was leading the group. So I took a huge leap and said, I'll lead it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I did. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, thanks, Carrie. That's an amazing next. And, and you're right. So much about haptics. You know, we've all been in those situations where you are working on a simulator, say starting an IV, and you're like, oh, this isn't what it feels like. This isn't real. Um, and we've all had those, you know, intravenous whisperers who can find an IV on anybody when you're sitting there and struggling. So yeah, how much of it is muscle memory? How much is experience? How much is the haptics? It's a very interesting question. I can't wait to hear more about it. Yeah, I agree. What else? What are the other people in the group? What's next for you? Sean, call you out, turn now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll share my next while people are unmuting. Um, I've got a couple of, it's kind of a, a spectrum for me at our, our center. Um, there are kind of the, the smaller projects. We recently invested in a 3D printer and I, it's fascinating to watch it print, but I have no idea how to create the models yet. So um, I hope to be delving into the, the world of, CAD design to be able to figure out how to make some of our own creations. And hopefully our, we'll make our model design a little more efficient. And then long-term down the road, more strategic planning, I'd love to be able to um, potentially bring a fellowship to our site. Um, but, you know, there, there's a lot of roadmaps out there and they all kind of go in similar directions, but I really want to be able to make sure that we've got a good foundation and do it right. So I've been researching that a lot lately as well. Nice offer there. Yeah, I just yeah. Thought it's trying to offer you three lessons. Take advantage of that. I may take oh, you up I on that, Kirk. Free. Thank you. I, I added the free part. I don't know. I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, team. Anybody else care to share their next or what uh, they're working on currently? I'm Is anyone gonna... else going to present to in, in IMSH in January? I'm going to present with the council. We're going to present preparing for accreditation site visits. We're doing a pre con That's good. That's a good one. I was going to queue up um, Tani Harvola to talk about, um, we have a mobile simulation team that is coordinated through our university system. And we have um, four mobile trucks and we're trying to grow um, and just wanted to queue Tani up to talk about that growth too. Yeah, thanks, Courtney, uh, for the intro. Yeah, so the Courtney, 
Like Courtney said, uh, the SIMND program is run out of the same simulation center out of the University of North Dakota, and we focus on rural healthcare and simulation. We have been uh, up and running since 2014, and we have four semi trucks, mobile simulation labs that drive around the state, which are super awesome, but they have their limitations. And our next is we're working on grants to get new sprinter vans. So it'd be like a, a vambulance if you if you're familiar with those. But they are going to be completely off grid capable. They'll always be connected to internet. They don't. They'll be able to keep themselves warm in the winter. Uh, we won't have any real big wind issues like we do with our big semi trucks right now. And we won't need a CDL driver for them like we do with our trucks. Uh, so it's really exciting. Every day I come to work and hope that I'm going to have that email saying we got one of our grants to buy them. Uh, so I'm I'm super pumped about that. It'll be It'll be a different thing for our mobile program but it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, that's a big one. Thanks. Yeah. Tanya, that's a really cool idea. I'm just curious, how much does a uh, Vambulance run you? Once it is gutted and then redone, um, around 212K, and we're going to get four of them. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, and we'll be able to house... We will be able to do small simulations in there. Right now, our van, our trucks, we can fit a dozen people in the truck at a time. The van will be limited to two to three, unfortunately. Uh, but we'll be able to haul all of our equipment wherever we need to go. Terrific. That sounds really cool. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Anybody else? New or exciting ideas to share? All right. Hearing none, I think uh, being mindful of everyone's time, because I'm sure the actual next is probably waiting outside somebody's office right now, getting ready to start the next evolution. I know it is here at my lab. Um, so that being said, thank you all for joining us. This was fantastic. I, I really appreciate the collaboration and taking the time to talk to us. Um, I hope you all have an amazing healthcare simulation week. And just a plug for later this week, we have another webinar on Thursday um, titled Ask the Directors. And we're going to be hosting five of the SSH directors. And this is your, your opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one question, question and answer period with all of them. So uh, tune in, it'll be at the same time and you can register through the website. Curtis, over to you. Anything I forgot, anything I'm missing? Anything no, you want to add? Your uh, presentation is impeccable as normal. Dr. John, you've done great. Thank you, sir. All right. Well, thank you again, everybody. I hope you have a great rest of your day and um, let's go forth and do great things in simulation. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye.